Good morning, ladies and gents. I've been asked to tie a couple of zonkers for rainbows. I personally don't fish for rainbows much, but I do fish a lot for perch in some reservoirs, and these are devastating for rainbows as well. You can tie this fly in many different styles of hooks. Today, I'm going to be using these. I'm not even sure if you get them anymore, but for perch, I do love them. They stay sharp, they're very strong, white wire. So, start off hooking the vise. A bit of super glue. The thread we're going to be using today is my normal clear nylon. Start off, get a thread base down. Right to the where it starts to bend the hook. And the main bit of this is all zonker, but for a body, I'm going to use silver frets, but also put a bit of flashaboo in for the tail. Just give it a bit of added flash, a bit extra. So take half a dozen strands with your flashaboo. And we're going to tie it in the same length as the hook. Just catch it in, just come forward a couple of turns, and then fold it back, and just come back a couple of turns, just tying over it, and that's it locked in. And just snip it off. As for Zonker, Zonker comes in many different colours and styles, but I personally like to buy it like this. They're all attached together. If you do a lot, if you tie a lot of flies, they're quite, they're handy. These ones are about three or four mil wide. Ideal for this size of hook. So just cut the zonker strip off up at, up near the top, so you get the full length, and you can get numerous flies from this. You'll get eight or ten flies from this one bit, no problem. So the length I'm going to cut it is I like to hold the skin at the eye and I'm going to come back just probably quarter inch by my flashaboo and that's my length. So there's that, so you've got this now. And what I like to do is just at the back I like to point it, just think it tidies up. Don't know if it makes a better swimming action, but it just looks better. So just point it with your scissors. Now, I'm going to hold this on the hook, the same length, right up to the front of the eye, and just split the hair back to where you want it, where your thread's going to cross over, and just one nice turn. And what I did there, I pushed the zonker round the hook. So, this probably goes 50-50, right round. And there's two turns, just make sure your zonker's sitting straight. It's got a tendency to twist. And get a third in there, making sure you don't trap any down. And that's it. In. Yeah, make sure you're sitting nice. And then I like to pull it back and just put one underneath. That's it locked in. The body what I'm going to use is this is 8 mil silver frets. Get it from most fishing stores. It's just pure silver. And what I do is I just strip the end a wee bit, just to bear the core. And I catch that in. Just bear the core so you don't get a lot of bulk. Not that it matters, because the thread's going to cover it. So catch everything down and bring your thread forward, probably to about four millimeters to the eye of the hook. And then a bit of super glue. In this case, we zap a gap so you don't twist around everything. 
and she's just going to add a bit of extra security with the frets so it sticks to the shank. And now, have one turn right in against the zonker, and then just come forward. I don't even touch and turn it, I open Parmer. There's going to be plenty of coverage on here. So you get your thread, I stop, I hold my frets vertically. And I bring my thread over, and I put a kink in it, and then I come forward two or three wraps, and then I fold it back. And when I fold it back, I'm, I pull everything back, and wind back over the top of it. And that's you locking it in, which means even if it does break, it's even if it does start to slip, it doesn't pull out. So snip off your your excess, tidy everything up, make sure you've caught all your fibers. And now bring your your zonker over the top. And this is why I kept it long, because I like to stretch it a wee bit. So if I, if I kept it short, the right length, I wouldn't be able to get a grip of it. But in this case, I can get a hold of it. So stretch it, not too much, just a wee bit. And then hold everything with this hand, with your left hand, and then catch over the top of it. Just pull tight. And that's you in, secure. You can get rid of your tag. Just take your time. As close to as close as possible. And then tidy everything up. Okay, at that stage, I like to do another bit of super glue. Just super glue as you go, and that makes it just makes it solid. So we're going to rotate our flying device and we're going to put on the underbelly. The, for the for this, I'm going to be using Mega Laser Dub from Deer Creek. So peach in the bottom, I'm going to put all of them on the top with a bit of UV black. So you take out your packet, you're not going to need a lot of this. And the way I measure it, is I want it to be about the length of the hook. Just a wee bit past. Just trim with your desired amount. That's about the right. And we're going to reverse tie this. So catch it in, facing forward, and back round. Make sure you're far enough forward. You're pretty much going to tie this right up to the eye. Because when you fold it back, you don't want any space in it. So now, I'm going to take some UV black. Just pull out your packet. This is just an over top, so just literally tear a bit out. We're not going to be using a lot of this. Catch this in. Trim your your end straight and catch that in. It's the same place, your threads are all your thread wraps are all in the same spot. So now we're gonna go for some olive. You see where it gets out the packet. So when it comes out the packet, it comes out like this. All I'm doing is I tear it the, the right width I want off and I just cut it. Now use a nice straight edge for you to tie in. So just reverse tie again, just catch it down. Couple of wraps. Just check that you haven't rolled around the hook. And now I don't want to trim off these bits. This is going to add bulk for the head. Just make sure you've caught it in and it's solid. Right? And now fan this top bit out. And this bottom bit, split it. Pull everything back. And I bring my thread up the side and over now. And then I pull this one back, the underside. So now your thread's in front of your gusset gun. Your gusset gun, your mega laser dump. So now, 
hold everyone, just check your square, and now I'm just going to go into a wet finish. Just hold everyone back. And three turn wet finish. Not really a lot. Get that tidied up. So now, now you've got to this stage, and it's still quite messy. Just make sure your stuff's sitting nice. Before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I like to resin my the front, keep my makeup and secure. So some Deer Creek, this is our flex, 100% tag free, cures in seconds. And what for this, I just take a wee bit of my double needle, stroke everyone back and just get some in there. Maybe a bit more. Just work your way around. We went at the top, we went in the bottom. Just this is also gonna help hold the hold it back to the shape you desire. Give it a zap, your torch. Just a few seconds, and that's it, solid. Right, now, it's quite messy here. So what I'm going to do is, get a comb, and you're just going to start combing the tips out. Hold the front of your file. You don't want to comb all this stuff out, you just want to comb the tips. So, once you've got your top wing, just start working your way down the sides. Just turn on your, your hook as you go. Oh. Just get it. The more you comb it, the thinner it gets. So just until you think you're happy with it, just blend the sides in, underside. This peach colour really seems to be devastating for pears. It has been for me anyway. So just when you think your shape's nice, you're you're ready, your shape. And that's because you've got your olive and your black and you've combed it together, blends through nice. Looks a lot more natural. Just work your way at it. Just take your time. No in a rush here. So now that's me, that's me, I'm happy with my shape. So and that is a big wide head, so the swimming action's phenomenal. If you really want if you really want, you can. I have got some which I've got, which are leaded. The I've got lead underbody. But to be honest, I fish in a sinking line, so I, I think I can control my bet my depth a lot better with a sinking line. So I have all my flies unweighted. So I'm just putting a wee bit more resin on it just to hold the shape that I want. Get a quick zap. And if you've got any fibres over the eye you're not happy with, get one of these. Phenomenal bits of kit. You get them. It's got a cane, tie it on flies. They're just makes finishing off your head so much easier. Just a cauterizing tool. I'm now using it in pretty much every fire tie. Wish I bought one years ago. Cheap bit of kit. Now for eyes, I personally I like oversized eyes. I've just always have. I just think it's a target point, a strike zone. So I'm gonna go for these. They're not deer, deer, deer creek. They're deer creek eye. I think they're the eight mils. Epoxy eyes. They do. Their eyes, they do loads of different types of eyes. They're all fantastic quality. Some of the designs are epic. So for holding these on the hook, I have an all-purpose. It's a Loctite, it's a gel, super glue. So I, what I do is I stick my 
the eyes of my thumb so I can find them and I turn my fly over so it's 90 degrees just take your your eye into your fingers and just a little lump of glue in the back and then just drop it where you want it this stuff only takes 3 or 4 minutes to dry doesn't take long same again on the other side just try and get it even, as even as possible and there you go there's a zonker devastating for perch devastating for rainbows I've also tied them on saltwater hooks devastating in the sea fish pollock flatfish, cold fish I've had cod on them and tying a wee bit bigger size with plenty of pike on them if you go on if you're on my youtube channel and you look up bullhead pike flies you'll see them in a bigger size six to eight inch long same kind of style right thank you for watching